Welcome to New Beginnings Church Online. What a day this is going to be. I've got a word for you, a message for you called Victim Me. Now, I don't want to say much more about it than that, but let me tell you this. I believe that transformation is about to come to your perspective. You're about to see yourself and you're about to see life differently. I want to encourage you not only to watch today, but engage. We love your comments. We love hearing your heart. We love hearing from you. God's going to do something great over these next few minutes. Transformation continues right now. I declare to you that transformation is in this room. I declare to those of you watching that change happens here, change happens where you are. I declare today that something is moving, something is lifting, something is breaking. There's a shout, there's a sound that's causing mountains to get nervous. Valleys are raising, waters are parting. I need you to really clap, jump, shout, throw an emoji online. Give us some fire, give us a wave. Somebody lift up your voice and shout. Well, it is good. <laughs> it is good to be in the house of God today. I'm glad to see each and every one of you. Glad to see those of you that are joining us online. Don't just watch, engage, interact. We love hearing your comments, those emojis. Look, if I was watching online today, I would just put my fire emoji on continue. <laughs> Something good is happening here today. Why you are in the mood to clap you want to put your hands together for our special guest, Titus Tucker. Man, love. We are family. We're just a bunch of huggers. Love your spirit. Love your heart. Love the anointing on your life. It's his first time being here, but it ain't going to be his last. Right? And I love the fact that he brought his beautiful family with him today. His lovely wife, Miss Sunny, is here. Give her a big hand. Just as precious. And we got to, my wife said, I just want to kidnap her, steal her. We have to fight Titus. And then there is the little man, the little myth, but a major legend, the dude of all dudes. Baby Axel is in the house. Now, come on, y'all. If you, if, you, if you haven't seen Baby Axel just yet, I'm, I'm putting a warning on it. He's contagious. Pastor Christine, all night last night, Jay, wouldn't it be great? I'm like, no, no. It really. I'm 41. No, it would not be great. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. But we are so glad you're here and your whole family. Give them another big, big hand and let them know that they're welcome here. Y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated in the presence of Jesus. So Nate was telling me today that I'd probably bump him, but I decided not to, Nate. I decided to let you come and encourage everybody here and everyone watching. Listen, it is an amazing thing. Come on, Nate, before I start receiving this offering. It is an amazing thing. <laughs> It is an amazing thing. It always gets dangerous when I start with that. It is an amazing thing that God gives us an opportunity to position our lives to receive by the simple, the simple obedience of giving. And with the same excitement that we worship and our singing and the same praise that we have when we clap and dance, we should have the same excitement when given an opportunity to honor God with stuff that cost us something. Amen. So let's just practice as Nate comes to take this microphone. Y'all just give God some praise. And like you're happy, you get ready to give. Come on. Hey, you can do better than that. Give it up for Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. We worship you today. So grateful that Jesus is here. We're glad you're here. But first of all, I'm glad he's here, okay? It can be me and him, and we're good. I'm just glad he's here. This morning, if you're a first-time guest or if you haven't received one of these really cool swag bags, I want to let you know that you need to go grab one of these at our welcome desk out in the lobby. It has a t-shirt in there for you and all kinds of stuff. We'd love to have a record of your attendance here today. If, if you'd like to right now, you can pull out your cell phone and you can text the word guest, just the word guest, not I am a guest, but the word guest to 407-901-2446. You can also do that from our app. You can download the NB Church app and you can do the guest connect from there. We'd love to connect with you today. Can you just, just real quick, just throw your hands up, 30 seconds. Jesus, we thank you. <laughs> You're so rich and so real right now in this moment, on this platform, all the way to the back wall from side to side. Jesus, you are here. You are tangible. And everything that we have need of, you have the access to. And you have granted us access and authority to receive it. Right now, Jesus, we connect our faith with our need and with your word of promise that you would give us all that we have need of, do it right now. Would your peace be here? May your healing power be here. Your restorative power right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, I'm going to encourage you in the offering, but I just had to do that a second. Um, if you do um, want to grab an offering envelope, the ushers have those. If you have need of them, they're nearby. At the end, before you, um, when we receive the offering, the buckets will be at the front and you can bring your offering to them. But before we get there, I just got to encourage you a minute. Mark chapter 5 has some powerful stories that if you guys know me, you know I, I speak about these stories, often pastor does too. But I want to twist it a little bit. Jesus said to um, Jairus when he came to him and he was in need of his, his daughter was sick. He said, don't, don't, don't worry about it, just believe me, right? So the, the messengers came from the house, and they said, she's already dead. Don't bother the teacher anymore. And Jesus turned to him, and he said, don't worry, just believe. At that moment, Jesus turned, and he went to his house, but he only took his three disciples with him and Jairus. When he got to the house, what happened? There were a bunch of mourners. They were making a commotion and a mess. Jesus said, don't worry, don't worry she's just asleep. They laughed at him. And this is what Jesus did, and this is what you need to take hold of today. Jesus walked into the house. With his disciples, he took that mama and that daddy by the hand, and he threw everybody else out, and he walked into that room. See, this morning, there are areas of your life that you got to put every voice out. you got to put every voice that is full of unbelief and doubt out, and you got to tell them, I don't have time for you. I don't have space for you because I know that there's a miracle on the other side of this, and I'm believing for that miracle to manifest right now. See, today, I don't care what it is, somebody is whispering in your ear that it, it will never happen, that you're not good enough, that you can't have that. And I know this is offering time, but it applies to offering. See, there is a financial breakthrough that is yours, that you do have access to, and that you should not let any voice tell you that you cannot have. Today, I believe with you. I don't believe in spite of you or without you. I believe with you. I take the word of God. I wrap my faith around it. I take some seed in my hand and I throw it in the ground because I know I don't just think it not just a maybe might happen one day. No, it's happening right now. Right now is the moment of breakthrough. Right now is your moment. Take hold today. Don't shrink back. Throw all those voices out. And I know we got all riled up, and I'm about to take this offering, but I got to tell you one miracle. Three days ago, okay, Thursday, I had a friend of mine in New York. I don't know if he's watching this morning. Call me, and he said, the doctors think there's something wrong with the baby. His wife's 11 weeks pregnant. They said they want to do more tests tomorrow, but the kidneys look wrong, and something's just not right. The blood work's okay, but the images aren't good. And I said, I said, Tom, just believe. We're just going to believe God already gave you this miracle pregnancy. It's not going to end now. No trauma's coming. Jesus doesn't give things just to take them back. It was already a miracle. And Tom texted me about 24 hours later. See, something can happen in 24 hours. Maybe right now is your 24 hours. But Tom texted me, and then he got me on the phone, and he said, 
we went for the ultrasound. They, they did all these scans. They left us for a long time. It, sound, it seemed like forever. That doctor came back in, and he goes, and he goes scanning himself. And he finally, he looks at my wife, and he looks at me, and he says, I don't know what they're talking about. There's nothing wrong with this baby. See, that's what Jesus can do. That's what my Jesus can do. That's what my Jesus can do, and he's yours too. And he wants to do it. He wants to do it right now. Whatever you're facing right now, breakthrough can happen right now. Just believe. Jesus, we believe you. We honor you. We worship you because you are the only answer. You're the only answer. You're not one of many answers. You are the answer. Jesus, we worship you. We honor you. We thank you for being with us. We thank you that you have given us access into the throne room that we can take and have anything we have need of. Jesus, this morning, I ask that you would bless this offering, that you would bless every single hand that gives into this offering. God, that you would take the little bit of ourselves that we give today and you would do multiplied, multiplied amounts of it with it than what we could do by holding it back. Jesus, we believe you that you are a good God and that you desire to make sure that we have everything we have need of and that we would live in abundance from now on forevermore. Bless this offering. Bless all who give. Bless this house. Continue to send the word of Jesus Christ all the way around the world from right here in Orlando, Florida. We'll give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, if you believe in God for miracles, give God some praise. Yeah, yeah. Wandering the place you hide is where it's all. This bag of all. Yeah. 
Come on, somebody, give Jesus a praise. Hey, you got to do that one more time. because Y'all crazy, you won't even let me preach. I know you. So, so I'm going to let you get it out of your system. Hey.
So listen, when, when a shout, listen, when a shout in a church makes your eardrums hurt, that's when you know revival is in the room. They don't care at football games. They don't care at concerts. So I need you to take 30 seconds. And if you need to plug your ears, plug them. But you better shout. I need you to lift up a sound of revival. I need you to lift up a sound. crack back. Psalm 107 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That means to declare, decree, to answer, to appoint, to assign. When you shout, you are responding to every voice, to every principality, to every infirmity. You're responding to racism. You're responding to economic difficulties. You're responding to political confusion. You're responding to a global pandemic. I need someone to say so. Now throw your hands up in the air. God cannot come into a place, His presence cannot be made manifest without Him saying something. And He cannot say something without doing something because whatever He says happens. So I believe over the next few minutes, the word of God is going to jump into your heart. It's going to break some stuff down and build some stuff up, pull some stuff out and put some other stuff in. It's a quick and powerful word, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it is alive. It is powerful. It is going to move something in you. It is going to change something in you. I declare over you and those watching, your mind is about to change. Your thinking is about to shift. God is about to adjust your perspective. And he's getting ready to give you faith. Faith eyes and faith vision. Just with those hands lifted, we receive that today. We align our hearts, and in faith, we say we agree. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Come on, give him one more praise. Give him one more praise. You may be seated. You may be seated. If I can't preach after that, I gotta sell insurance or something. I want, to, I want to throw this title up here in just a minute, uh, kind of an unusual title, but we're going to have fun with this. I want, to, I want to preach a message to you today entitled, Victim Me. Victim Me. Just give a pre-amen because y'all didn't, it didn't seem like you liked that, that first scoop. So let's just, I'm going to talk to you today about Victim Me. And I don't want to say much more about the title than that. I want to, I want to leave it there. Uh, because I think in the next few minutes, the title will begin to speak for itself. But I want to begin today by reading the word to you. So I would like them to put that scripture uh, up on the screen for me. It's Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. We're going to read a few verses here, verse 1 through 7. It says, when Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour to pray, the ninth hour, a certain man who was lame, unable to walk, that condition from his mother's womb was carried. And they had laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, 
And daily he would ask for alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Everyone just shout, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I'm going to give you. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. I want you to thank God for his word, because... Everything we have, everything we are, hangs on the word of God. I want to begin today, uh, Joseph, if you could bring that to me. I think this one, I want to just start off this way. Some of y'all that haven't shouted yet today, you're about to shout. Because I am holding in my hand a check written for $1 million to cash. That means somebody's going to get paid today. So somebody, somebody's going to go home blessed and highly favored. <laughs> Y'all remember that when people say, that's the highly favorite? All right, so let's just cut the stuff. This check isn't real. Come on. Y'all know this. <laughs> let me, let me bu burst your bubble. You are not going home today with a million dollars. At least not for me, you're not, okay? Now, I will tell you this. If someone decides to bless you with a million, that's between you, them, and Jesus. I want to encourage you to tithe. <laughs> remember the house of the Lord? If you want to throw a pair of shoes at me on top of it, I'll be happy with that too. So why am I holding this check out? I want you for just about two minutes, and it doesn't matter what you have to do to do it, whether you want to just stare at this check or you want to close your eyes and zone off. Just come back if you go away. Come back. But I want you to imagine for just about 60 to 90 seconds, what if this check was real? I need you to just allow your imagination to run wild for just 30 seconds. Allow yourself to dream. If this check was real, if this check was yours, what would you do with it? Get that smile off your face. What would you do with it? What are the emotions that you would feel? Excitement? Joy? Come on, somebody help me. Would anybody feel like a sense of relief? Feel a little bit better? You'd be like, hey, we sang that song, Breakthrough is Coming. For real, man, for real. It showed up. So <laughs> for a minute, allow yourself, what would you do with it? Would you pay off debt, your house, your car? Would you pay off some of your kids' debt? Would you uh, pay off their student loans? Would you put a little something, something aside for your grandchildren? Mom and dad? Okay. <laughs> Just, man, man, if they ain't going to do it for them, they sure won't do it for me. W would you... Put it into retirement. What would that retirement be? What would it look like? Would you invest it? Property is a good thing to invest. Maybe you have a business or maybe there's a stock. Maybe you're one of those kind of people that loves trading stocks online or whatever. But allow yourself for just a moment to allow your imagination to run wild and dream. What if this check was mine? What if this check was real? What if I was taking this million-dollar cash check home with me today? Do you feel the excitement? Do you feel the joy? Well, let me remind you, wake up, little Susie, this is not a real check. It is not yours, and you're not going home with a million dollars. But I wanted, through this fun illustration, to give you the idea of seeing something that you want to be real. Something that you would dream would be tangible just to be reminded this is not yours. I give you this illustration because in many ways I believe this is how the man in Acts chapter 3 must have felt. As he sat there every day begging for alms money, but it wasn't really money that he wanted. He needed that to survive. But that was just a remedy or a relief. It was not actually the remedy. And he had to sit there watching people go into a temple that he probably wanted to go into. He watched people walk in and pray, and I'm sure he wanted to walk in there and pray. He watched everybody around him walking, working, thriving while he stayed there surviving. Watching everybody around him do the very things that he could not do 
but so desperately wanted to do. Please do not sit in this room or online today and pretend like you have no context for this feeling because we all know what it's like to watch someone else thrive financially while you're struggling just to get by. God is putting their marriage together while the enemy's pulling yours apart. Their kids are out there setting the world on fire. Yours are still trying to burn your house down. Hey, that got some parents in the house that know what the preacher's preaching. You watch everybody else get their healing while you still put the insulin needle in your body and you're on 15 different medications. You watch everybody else's family run to God while yours runs from God. You watch everybody else's heart get healed while yours is still broken. God lifts them up while you're falling down. God restores their marriage while yours is falling apart. They have a husband, you don't. They have a father, you don't. They have a family, you don't. You know what it feels like to watch everybody around you having something that you desperately want to have but don't feel like you can have it. But here is where I want to insert to you the transformational moment in our text. It is when Peter says to this man, I need you to look at me. There is so much depth and power behind this statement because Peter wasn't saying just look at me as much as he was saying to the man, I am here to fix your perspective. I want you to stop looking at what you've been looking at. And I want you to stop looking at it the way that you've been looking at it. I want to adjust you. I want to fix you. And I want you to stop looking at yourself as victim me. I am tired of the victimization mentality that has seeped its way into the most powerful army on planet earth. The devil is a liar. No victim me. You refuse today and you refuse today to look at yourself through the lenses of lids and limits and limitations and begin to see the way God has anointed you to see. Stop looking at what you can't be, what you can't do, what you can't have. Stop looking at the reasons. Stop looking at the excuses. And stop looking at yourself through the filter of comparison. Well, if I had that kind of money, I'd live in that kind of a house too. If my husband or wife was like that, I'd have a better marriage. If my children were like their children, I'd be a better parent. That is victim me. And Peter says, we are going to transform your life by first transforming your vision. I'm going to transform your condition by transforming your vision. You've got to stop seeing yourself the way that you do and as your mentality begins to change, your reality begins to shift and align itself in accordance. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I don't know who's watching online that needs to hear this word from God, but I came to tell you to get your eyes off of all of that stuff around you and fix your perspective. Peter says, stop looking at yourself like that. Stop looking at yourself as victim me and put your eyes on me. Okay, so now inquiring minds want to know. Peter what was so special about you? I'll tell you what was special about Peter. Peter was our vision. Transformation. Peter is the same guy that Jesus said the devil has desired to have you. That he can sift you like wheat, but I prayed that your faith would not fail. This, this Peter was the same Peter that in righteous indignation, it's a spiritual reason for being mad, cut off the ear of the soldier. This is the same Peter that three times denied Jesus to a little girl. But this really wasn't that Peter. This was a trans. Formed. So 
when Peter said, look at me, all he was saying to this man is you need to begin to perceive that transformation has just shown up in your life. You need to perceive that change has just shown up in your life. And I'm making an announcement to you and every one of you joining us online church. I want to make an announcement because Jesus is in this room, because he is in your room, your living room, your bedroom, your bathroom. Thank God you can see us and we can't see you. Come on, somebody. But because Jesus is in your house and because Jesus is in this house, I can tell you that transformation has just arrived in your life and change has just arrived in your life. So now I prophesy, and that don't mean to call out addresses and ages. Y'all are safe. Breathe. I want to speak good about your future because change has just shown up. I believe debts can supernaturally be canceled. Bodies can be healed. Minds can be set free. Chains can break. Children can get saved. And marriages can get restored. This past week, whenever it was, I was in Columbus. All I remember is it snowed three inches. I was happy to get on an airplane and come home. I was doing some television uh, on top of some other things. And when I got to the end of the program, I just happened upon a thing. Just kind of tripped over it. And I started talking about Pentecostal revival. I'm closing. I'm going to land the plane. I'm circling. But I'm landing. Slowly. It's a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. Take my time. Take my time. <laughs> Pentecostal revival. Let me just break this. It's not weird. I'm not talking about weird. I'm not talking about goofy manifestations and behaviors. What is then a true Pentecostal revival? Let, let, me, let me help you by pointing you back to this thing that too many of us don't preach from or read anymore. It's called the Bible. Because I can give you my opinion, but I want to give you... Do you remember... When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, that was Pentecostal revival. When Peter and John lifted this layman to his feet and he walked, leaping, jumping, dancing, rejoicing, and carrying those two on his shoulders, that was Pentecostal revival. When the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment and life came from him into her, and that issue was immediately healed. That was Pentecostal revival when Jesus touched the coffin of that dead boy and his mother receives him to life. That was Pentecostal revival. When Jesus himself, being dead three days, was raised by the Holy Ghost, that was Pentecostal revival. When the Holy Spirit invaded the upper room in Acts chapter 2, shook the foundations of the building, blew the windows out, and cloven tongues of fire appeared on the heads of every one of them, that was Pentecostal revival. And when he shakes your house, and when he blows the windows out of your house, and when he shows up on your sons and your daughters, and when he heals your body, and when he saves your marriage, my friend, that is Pentecostal Revival. Did I tell you I'm closing? I'm closing. <laughs> revival is not marked by a bunch of church services strung together over the course of weeks. Revival isn't even people getting saved, although you can't have revival without people getting saved. It's not a bunch of people getting healed, although there can't be revival without healing. Revival, as I've taught you, is simply when everything that you perceive is dead, comes to life again. And I am speaking now about your future. You are in a church today and you are a part of an online church today 
that doesn't just sing about dry bones rattling. We are those bones. We don't sing about a wind that's blowing. We are feeling the wind that is blowing. I prophesy that you are in the midst. You are in, as Titus was talking about, your middle. I want to tell you what your middle is. You're slap dab in the middle of a revival. You're in the middle of an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire. If you believe it, you ought to give God like 30 seconds of Did I tell you I was closing? Because I am. I mean it. I'm serious. I don't use it anyway. Y'all got tricked. As I for real close. He brings Ezekiel, the prophet. It's Ezekiel 37, if you need reference. To a valley of bones. Bones. Who do these bones belong to? An army. An army that had been defeated. And as a result of their defeat, they die. There's no skin, no organs, no tissue. Bones. Bones. Flesh gone, organs gone, tissue gone, bones. Do you know why that's significant? The prophet Isaiah prophesied over Jesus, about Jesus, and said not one bone in his body will be broken. You'll be able to see through him from the wounds. Rip his flesh and he'll bleed every drop of blood, but not a bone will be broken. Why? Why? Because the bone is the strength the only thing that died in your loss was your flesh your strength remains and it's not to the dead flesh I speak to I prophesy to your bones I prophesy to your strength and I declare and decree today that there is a wind that is blowing and a spirit that is gathering and I declare that everything you think is dead that marriage the vision the faith the ability to believe God for big that is dead the dream destiny, the plan, the purpose, the ministry, the measure, the mantle, the gift. That you think life has ruined. Didn't ruin what you thought it ruined. Your strength remains. And it's to your strength today here. And to you that are watching online, it is to your strength today that I say, yes, these bones will live again. To the marriage, it's going to live again. To the dream, the call, the anointing that God's placed on you, it will live again. Your drug addict son will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Your daughter is coming out of those chains of bondage because there is a spirit that is moving. I'd get up on my feet if I were you and throw my hands up. There is a spirit that is moving. There is a wind that is blowing. And this wind brings to life everything that it encounters. It is this wind that will sustain you. It is this wind that will empower you. And so I speak to your strength today. And I say live in the name of Jesus. Live. With those hands lifted, come on all over this room. Those of you watching online in a moment, we're going to be saying goodbye to you. But before we do, we pray over you. We speak over you. As I speak over everyone in this house today, I speak over every one of you watching in your house. Not cliche. 
Transformation has shown up in your life today. How can you say that if Jesus is in your house? Transformation's in your house. And if Jesus is in your house, that means healing is in your house. Deliverance is in your house. Peace in your mind. Joy in your heart. Health in your body. So I speak over you today. I speak over every one of you that are in this room for restoration to come. In the area of relationships that God put together those things that have been falling apart. I pray for financial blessing upon you. Not for you to be greedy, but for you to be a giver. You can't give if you ain't got no bread to give. So you be blessed to be a blessing. I pray for your business to prosper. I pray for your business to thrive. I pray for your business to double and then double again. I pray for joy to come. Joy that is unspeakable and filled with the glory of God's power and presence. I pray for an overwhelming peace. A kind of peace that don't even make sense. I pray for peace. Pray that you would receive whatever it is you need from Him today in this moment. Receive. In Jesus' name. Amen.